And welcome everyone to a brand new Trolling with Logic. This week we're just doing a follow-up and reaction and sort of review to the what we endured last week, the What the Bleep Do We Know alleged documentary. And with me this week, it's pretty much the same team, but I'll introduce them anyway. Marty, how's it going? I'm doing okay. Zilla, how are you doing? Cool, cool. And Kitch. Uh, st I'm still in shock of what I just witnessed last week. <laughs> I say, well, we've had a good week. We've gone away. We've gotten very, very drunk, probably. The hangovers are now clear, cleared. <laughs> so I think we can just, you know, kind of maybe sit back, just reflect on what we thought of that film instead of reacting to it. So I think what the, what we'll do here, I think, is we'll start off by talking about what was actually good in this film, the good parts. Um, I know <laughs> you're probably that, but I think it's fair just to do that before we get into the meat of what we'll probably be discussing. So I'll just go right out. Uh, Marty, I'll start with you. If you remember okay. what the good things about this film were. It ended? <laughs> uh, no, no. Well, I mean, it's... No, no not much. Really? No, nothing it's at all. Ju it's just a bunch of bullshit. There's no redeeming qualities to this whatsoever in your view. Maybe if you if you look at it as as a movie and and you know the whole um, the narrative part, but I, I didn't even think that was good. Yeah. So that's oh well, that's Marty's very quick. No, I, th I thought it was shit. Yeah, uh, Zilla. Um, oh God. even at the time, I suppose the the effects at the time it came out were probably yeah. fun to look at, but probably like for um, <laughs> that's about it for <laughs> probably like a low budget documentary at the time, like the CGI and the special effects and the animations they used were it was pretty incredible. They pulled that off on what I think would have been a meager budget. Yeah, but but that's about it, and. There wasn't a lot to the style, but considering there was nothing to the substance, that's about all I can say. Yeah. And Kutch. Um, it was. Um, <laughs> I suppose if I were to give it something, it had Barry Kripke before you know he was Barry in the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> that is. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be something, right? Yeah. And also, it was technically a movie. So, you know, it did get the fact that it was. <laughs> Although everything in the movie was crap. Yeah. It was actually a movie. Yeah, so... And, and I also must add, I also have to add, and it was not, it was not Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. or, or The Room. Yeah, I'd probably say the same at the production values were quite decent on it you can it was quite well presented that way but i think we can sort of go through the movie in pieces like um i'll try and summarize how it actually goes right we'll focus on the story part because yeah this kind of became a mess it started off kind of you've got this deaf girl she's a photographer and well it She's not doing much at the start, but then she comes home after a day of work and she's got this crazy uh, roommate, this new age, this stereotype new age roommate. And then the deaf girl, she sleeps in one day at work. She's late for work. Um, she misses the subway train where in the subway they have this weird art presentation going on and she gets a bit of... Um, fortune cookie wisdom by Quark from Star Trek and it's by the way he's only in it he only has one line in it it's just for one line he says yeah pretty much and it's yeah probably she's, a, the creepiest line yeah so she's in the subway she gets an angry call from her boss get your ass into work she walks to work she stops at a basketball court where yeah we've Oh, was that before the subway or is that after? I, I think it remember. was before. That's, was yeah, before. It? Yeah, she gets a lesson. It's an entanglement that kid was on about. Uh, he was on about everything quantum mechanics doesn't actually say. Yeah. 
So yeah. she gets a lecture by uh, little kids. He's basically a mini Morpheus. He actually rips off some of Morpheus's lines. She gets into work. Her boss is angry with her. Um, she he orders her to go photograph a wedding when she won't do weddings because we get in a flashback scene her ex-husband cheated on her and even eyed up in the most obvious way eyed up a woman while they were getting married. Yeah, I think the only way he <laughs> this movie the most is unsubtle way ever. The only oh, way he could have made it. Um, the only way he could have made it blatantly more obvious he was into another woman is if he just ran across the church floor and just started shagging the woman on the church floor. I think. <laughs> and then she goes to this wedding, and then I have no idea what I. I'll just describe what happens because I don't know what any of it meant. She starts. They start going on about the hippocalamus and. Your ba- brain chemistry, we get some oh, animations God. of I'm... brain chemicals getting drunk. She gets drunk, she wakes up the next day, and then she starts drawing on herself, has a bath, and then it ends there, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it kind of seems to end quite abruptly. It drags on and on and on and on and on and on and on for yeah. hours, and then suddenly stops, and you're left going, what? <laughs> yeah, because I thought... Like, once she'd, you know, after she'd drawn her, you, you would see her, she would get into her life, and her, her life would just be fantastic from there on in. Yeah, but the, the whole film just seemed, it seemed like the guy who wrote it had ADHD, because he's constantly going from thing to thing, unrelated, going, ah, oh, this thing, oh, this thing, oh, this thing, and then suddenly after two hours, goes, oh, I'm bored now, yeah, and stops. It, well, see, my theory is that that narrative part was made separately, <laughs> And mm. the guy who made it ran out of money. And then the makers of the New Age guy said, we'll complete the film for you. And they inserted all the New Age crap over it. That's my theory. I know it's how it came about. Yeah, that actually makes sense. It's as good a theory as any. Cool. You know, it, is, it does seem at times that the actual narrative just doesn't seem to match up. It seems like it's almost after the thought that they got these interviews and tried to make them fit. Right. Yeah, yeah but much. Marty, do you have any idea what was going on at the end? No, really, I I don't. I I think that in the theatrical version, it ends with her uh, throwing away her medicine yeah. because she you know she doesn't need it anymore because she can quantum herself uh, <laughs> out of yeah, depression I or whatever. Something about that. Yeah. But and and that was missing in uh, in the version we watched. Yeah, and I, version, and I, I I don't know. I think in our version, the the kind of pharma well the drug use that she's on it's pharmaceuticals, but it's not really expanded upon. It's not you see her taking it once or twice, but yeah, they never actually say like oh she's hooked on this stuff and it's dangerous. You just see her once or twice taking some pills and that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, I just remembered the, the neurons, the, the synapses when they were t- shown how they fire. It was just like little bolts of electricity. No, the synapses don't fire like that. That's not how they work. Yeah, they were these zero uh... transmitters. I'm sorry, I'm still raging over it. I was raging over it in work today in lunch. I was discussing this film at work, and then I just broke down into another and into another rage. <laughs> yeah, it was, and it was the hippocampus they were showing, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember you say it doesn't behave like that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure the hippocampus doesn't pump. It's not like a heart. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty um, sure if it did, it would probably do. And if it's pumped at the rate they were think, saying it would, you'd yeah. be in very serious problem. And yeah, well, what, what's a pumping? Like, <laughs> I know the heart pumps blood. What does the hippocampus pump? Like, <laughs> don't say it. Yeah, Energy. Well, quantum. <laughs> so, uh, Marty, we'll go to the bit you'll probably be able to maybe explain the basketball scene. What, what was going on there? Oh, yeah, well, basically was saying that, uh, well, everything scales up from quantum mechanics. So a basketball is uh, 
everywhere at once, essentially. Um, yeah, was it trying to describe of superposition? How quantum mechanics works. Yes, there's a macro equivalent to yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's just so wrong. Yeah. It's like you say, a problem a lot of the New Age quantum will have is they hear these analogies and then they take the analogies to be real. And is that what was kind of going on there? And I think we've lost Mark yeah. there. But yeah, he's broken down into an into a yeah, silent he's, rage. He's already broken. He's down. gibbering in the corner, and catatonic. Yeah. But no, I I think that is what they seem to be doing is the very classic. Let's take an analogy and then let's forget it's an analogy and run with it like it's real. It's like the um the one in Voyager where they're talking about being stuck in the black hole. Horizon. And they the use horizon. the analogy of the you know being underneath some ice and looking up back at the ice and, and then just smashing the through it yeah it's smashing through it and they go yeah let's forget that's an analogy and let's pretend that's actually how reality works <laughs> so that we can get out of this plot problem yeah like you yeah, know it, it's not going to work like sf debris said you know I, I can draw you a circle around your car of how far you can drive if you've got so much petrol in your car and then I can rub out a bit of that circle. That doesn't mean you can now drive through the circle because that <laughs> bit's not there anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Apparently, I'm having tech issues. Tech. We need to quantum our tech a little bit. So. Mm. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're quite not entangled yet. But like, like I say, like we were saying there before you got cut off, Marty, um, a big problem with, and you've experienced you've obviously got more experience of this than anyone else but they hear these analogies and then they take the analogies to be that's how it is yeah mm -hmm. i mean obviously you've got experience with jordan he does this all the time yeah um but he does yeah and with his cosmic vacuum cleaners for black holes and <laughs> yeah. the way he didn't understand that two-dimensional representations of a gravity well wasn't people saying space is two-dimensional <laughs> yeah well and there's just one other thing to go back to the narrative of the film <clears throat> at the very end when the main character's drawing on herself i remember this that like she's standing in a bathroom mirror she's got a pencil and we don't know why she's drawing on herself but she's drawing some fancy pattern and i always remember because she's standing in her underwear and her flatmate walks in and kind of looks at her then looks down gives her the look and i thought for a second is this going to be a lesbian scene that comes out of nowhere because <laughs> i thought it wouldn't be any more random than it. but then yeah she just asked oh, can i have some non and she actually says non-fluoride toothpaste and walks away. Yeah. And I just thought, God. oh, because for a second there, it was all building up to them having a lesbian makeout. And but like I said, well, even that wouldn't have saved the movie, though. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was just something I know. And her, she specifically asks for non-fluoride toothpaste in her own house. Yeah. <laughs> just. I think that's just their kind of a uh, bit of more conspiracy shite that they turn pushing there. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Zilla, I'll get you to... But at the end, they, when you broke down, when they raped Flatland. Oh, oh fucking hmm. hell, yeah. <laughs> Quantum. Was it Professor Quantum raped geometry? I couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, give us a little background on the original Flatland and what that is, because I tried to explain it in the car. I think I got it a bit wrong, but I'll let you explain it, because you're a fan of the original. Yeah, the, the original book was written, it was actually a critique of Victorian kind of values, um, and it, in much the same way that Escher kind of made mathematical paintings out of a bit of curiosity, but liked the art. This was somebody who'd written a book about critiquing, critiquing these values and had decided to throw a little bit of mathematical kind of weirdness into it. So he, he decided that he'd invent this universe where it was a 
two-dimensional mathematical space and then explain how a three-dimensional or a creature that experiences a three-dimensional space would interact with a creature that experiences a two-dimensional space and it's it's quite good it's quite fun to to kind of think of how you know how you can try and picture dimensional spaces larger than the one you experience so it, it's a fun little little book for for that kind of geometry yeah and then uh it's been made into a few films but the most notable is the 2007 it was made wasn't it the cgi movie yeah the animation but it's <laughs> it's not a film of the book it's more like you said an interpretation of the book yeah I, it's, it's again it's it is really good and it does keep some of the the books kind of themes um yeah. still within it very it's it's still very true to the book in a lot of ways yeah and then um, and so then uh, is it professor quantum or captain quantum i can't remember i think it's professor, professor quantum yeah so then professor quantum's version of it well i i think i just kind of went very catatonic because he started some utter rubbish and and talking about himself being in a higher dimension and that that just makes absolutely no mathematical sense in any way no. there's no such thing as being in a higher dimension um you can just you can experience a three-dimensional world and somebody else can experience a two-dimensional world you, you're not in a higher dimension you still exist within their universe um, it's just that your universe is slightly larger yeah. as a mathematical space. And for uh, everyone here, I've got a good analogy. Like, whatever town you're in, you can't walk out in the street and visualise the layout of the town. But if you go up in a helicopter, look down, you can see the street layout. You're not suddenly acquiring this... You know, ex, you, know you haven't moved up. You've just got a different perception of it. Yeah, yeah. And I, it, it was... One thing that, well, one way you can put it is that there, there were points on this flat universe, or in this flat universe, that were coplanar with points within Professor Quantum's own body. You know, so, so parts of him are still within that two-dimensional space. So it's not that he exists in a higher dimension. He's still existing in that universe. It's just that. He also exists in a dimensional space of three rather than just two. So it's difficult to try and explain to people what dimensions are and not yeah. fall into the trap of sounding like the quantum woo bullshit interpretation yeah. that, that people try and use to the, the term dimension to mean. Yeah. And that's what they're taking advantage of. Yeah. And, it, and they basically ran with the whole idea that a uh, dimension is this yeah. woo kind of yeah. new universe other universe it's not in it's yeah. not another universe it's just a property of this universe yeah you know yeah. The, we can still picture our universe being within a four-dimensional space that doesn't mean that that four-dimensional space is another universe mm. <laughs> it's, yeah. so it's yeah, it just pisses me off. Or, or a really simple analogy, it's a term we, like a fish out of water, like a fish can't comprehend, you know, living in a dry space. You can take the fish out to experience, but it doesn't suddenly become, you know, breathing fresh air. And that's what they implied with that. Once you move up to this dimension, you gain these extra abilities. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's, a, it's a crude, but I just, I know someone's going to run with that analogy now. <laughs> I mean, that's that's how quant that's how these guys would work. They would hear that analogy and think, "Oh, you could take a fish out of water and it'll start breathing fresh air in a few minutes because it can perceive fresh air suddenly." <laughs> Please don't do that. That is a cruelty to fish. Yes, and yeah, I suppose while we're on Captain Quantum or Professor Quantum, his first bit, which was the double slit experiment. Mm -hmm. Oh so God! Did he get that right at all? Well, um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much until he started talking about how uh, particles have, uh, yeah, that they have <laughs> intentions, and yeah, that's just but the observer garbage. 
Yeah. So, yeah, probably, you know, as a analysis. So, Marty, what is the observer effect broken down? Well, it's basically that any observation requires interaction. Yeah. We don't think about it that way because when we look at something, we don't affect it. But what's actually going on is that photons are being sent from a light source hitting an object and then being reflected into our eyes. Those photons actually interact with the object. In, in, if we're talking about just in case, just in case where we, we're, we're looking at something. Yeah. Obviously, if, the, if it's another ob kind of observation, it wouldn't be, work the same way. But whenever you're going to look at um, a quantum scale object, just to oversimplify it, you'd have to send some kind of, well, for example, a photon. You have to send something to bounce off it, and then it comes back and we measure it. Now, when we uh, bounce a photon off a very tiny particle, it's going to move away. Mm -hmm. We have altered the thing we're measuring. We have changed it. By observing it, we have affected it. And in quantum mechanics, this is simply a, a fundamental fact about how you make measurements. You cannot measure something without affecting it. Yeah, that's the, sorry, that's, the, wanna... that's the, the oversimplified explanation. I know I'm butchering it, but yeah. it's, I'm but it's trying just, to keep it really um, simpler. I think there's one bit of Futurama which kind of elaborates on that. I don't know if you've seen it when they go to the, I ho the horse races and the so. photo finish. No. And the professor's horse was in the photo finish <clears throat> and he loses, but he complains that you change you change the result by measuring it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's no fair. You change the result by measuring it. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, but back to but, you. But, but the way this uh, the way this becomes relevant when we're talking about the double slit experiment <laughs> is that if you're not observing it, then uh, the wave function is not collapsed yeah but by measuring it you're collapsing the wave function and that changes the behavior of the electrons he used as an example it doesn't have to be electron specifically but uh, it it goes from behaving like a wave to behaving like a particle yep and so the new ages they take this and they interpret it as being you can change things just by looking at them Yes, and they also add this completely unjustified idea that it's your state of mind that determines the state it collapses into. So that basically, if you're happy, it collapses into uh, something you want. And if you're pissed off, it collapses into something you don't want or something like that. Yeah. So basically, you can choose how events unfold. And there's just no, uh, there is no way you could even interpret that, you know, there is no way you could make that misinterpretation. Yeah. It has to be on, it has to be just intentional. They're making shit up. There's no way they can actually believe this, the people who, who come up with this stuff. Mm. Yeah, and because that tied into the bit earlier we talked about on the subway station yeah and i think it's been addressed many many times the what's the guy's name again oh something emoto is it emoto. Emoto. yeah 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 because it's actually quite fitting with what he's talking about but yeah is th this idea that you, you, yeah. your state of mind will affect how water molecules freeze and that that's just complete bullshit. There is, n there was no controls whatsoever. And oh yeah, the guy is not even a scientist. He didn't use any kind of scientific methodology. And uh, I did some quick research about this guy, and it um, for one of my videos. And it turns out that his his degree is completely fake. Yeah, he got it from a diploma mill. I went and checked out 
the university, well, university within quotation marks, uh, home site, uh, homepage, and uh, it says it's accredited by this um, institution, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember what it was called, but I look up that, and it, basically it's it's a, a guy with a desk in Calcutta. Uh, and uh, it has nothing to do... I, I, I went to the Indian uh, government's homepage and everything and looked up okay how how do i check out whether an indian university is accredited and it guess what you can and i looked up a, a list of all accredited <laughs> universities in india and it's not on the so it's oh, just man. yeah it's a diploma mill yeah but his his whole premise was really bizarre anyway because it was just arbitrary it was like well if you if you write the word love on the water it, it turns into this beautiful crystal well, yeah well, that's pure subjectivity, isn't it? That's you telling yeah. me that you think that's a beautiful crystal and therefore yeah. it's to do with love. What if I thought that crystal looked ugly? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's... And it it wasn't even a blind test or, or um, no. a blind study. It was actually uh, a case of, look... This is the crystal that was frozen that it says love on. And this was the one that was frozen that says, uh, here's what you can go do with yourself. Uh, which do you think looks better? <laughs> I mean, come on, at least do a blind study or preferably a double blind. James Randi was in touch with him and said, look, do this in a double blind test and I'll give you a million bucks. And... He never got back to him, of course. <laughs> that that uh, coveted prize remains yet unclaimed. Yeah. Because that's, um, if I remember, it was something that was in the theatrical cut. What was it? No, it was that, th yeah, it was about the crime in L.A. Yeah. That, that wasn't in this version, but yeah. it led into this thing where they said the positive thinking stopped all crime in some part of LA one day. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, as I recall, what? that was actually not even. Uh, <laughs> it's not even that they found a correlation. That was completely made up because that was actually one of the worst periods ever in terms of crime. As I, as I recall, I, don't quote me on that, but I yeah, seem to remember reading that. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember what the exact. I think. Go and listen to the League of Nerds. I think they explained, they looked into that a bit more. But there was something like that. It was just really yeah. bizarre. They said that all this positive thinking stopped crime in LA for one day. <laughs> Don't uh, ask me, but um, as we're on this bit, I suppose, Marty, as we'd been geeks, we have to talk about Quark being in this film. Yeah. Do you think he knew what this film was about when he made it? Because he's only got one I line. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, I, I know think he it's has. perfectly possible that he didn't, and this was another Mulgrew thing. <laughs> and I'm yeah. going to start calling these instances Mulgrews. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it's perfectly possible. I don't know if he's into shit like that. I I know that um, uh, Jeffrey Combs is uh, into a lot of this. Going to correct shit. you there. It's a common mistake, but it's just that there is a new age guy called Jeffrey Combs. It's not the same guy at all. Really? Yep. I've looked this up, and a lot of people make this mistake. But Jeffrey Combs... It's, oh. It's Jeffrey Combs, the actor, and it's Jeffrey Combs, the new age. Oh. It's just two people with the same name. Because I was trying to find this out, and yeah, I looked it up. Um, again, I could, I'm pretty sure that's what the case is. But it was just yeah, I, I'm I'm of the opinion that Armin Shimmerman, who plays Quark, that he not that he didn't know anything about the film at all, but he was told it was gonna be like a sci fi or something or he wasn't told it was gonna to be this documentary about new age and physics. And everybody's yeah, I, silent. I think that's possible. Hmm. Or there was just a paycheck. And because it's quite funny that the actress that's in this, um, like you pointed out, Zilla, she's actually quite a reasonably famous actress in her own right, the main yeah. girl. Her name, Marley Matlin is her name. 
and she's actually won an Oscar. Uh, Deck, I can't remember what film, but she's the only deaf person to win an Oscar. Um, and she's quite an accomplished. <coughs> but the weird thing is, I've looked, I was looking around her thing, and she doesn't comment on this film at all. Which I don't think you would if you'd been in it. <laughs> yeah, which leads me, I'm very much of the opinion that the actors in the narrative, like it was two different films that were being made here. Yeah. I'm really of that because it does seem like that. Yeah, it does. I'm back, by the way. Yeah, all right. It, it's, yeah, my connection is acting up like mad today. No, I was, I was just commenting there that the main girl in this film, she, I've gone through her pages and all that. And although she said, she mentions she was in this film, she doesn't talk about, you know, she doesn't mm. give interviews or discuss it very much. And I said that that's what kind of leads me to believe that these were two different films almost. Hmm. Like, well, you know, they got the actors, but they didn't really inform them all this new age stuff was going to be tacked onto it. At oh, the very least, something like that. So. They they didn't know it was going to be some documentary. They thought it was just going to be some. They, may, kind they of maybe film. just took it as a quick paycheck when they were offered it. Yeah. 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 Which. Ah, just as a reminder, the uh, another bit, the wedding itself, and those two kids that walk uh, walk in with their Terminator vision. <laughs> oh yeah, the gay guys. <laughs> yeah, are they gay? They they are totally gay. Are they? All right. Cause it's yeah, <laughs> like it's like again to rip off the League of Nerds. Sorry, they were saying like it's two twenty-year-old teenagers that walk in. <laughs> Yeah. And they said they're scanning all the women and men and that for who they're quite obviously as well. They said the acting, and someone else, someone pointed this out that they said it was a Polish wedding, but someone pointed out to all the stuff that they somehow they figured this out. But the writing on the invitations and that was Czech, so. Hmm. <laughs> but I don't know. Is uh, I'll go to any other bits that really nod on you guys. Kitch, we haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, there's, uh, I can't even, there's just so much wrong in that movie. I think everything just got horrifically butchered. Yeah. The physics, the biology, the, the acting. Well, to be fair, I think the acting was okay for what it was. Like, the acting just wasn't, apart from the, the roommate character. <laughs> oh, she was so annoying. Well, I don't like know we... if it, I don't know if that that was bad acting. It it could have very well have been that I, f- I she, thought it was she high... was supposed to act that way. Yeah, I, don't... I, yeah. I found it to be highly accurate acting. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, myself, Marty, and Dave <laughs> agreed in the late nineties. We all knew a girl at high school or college that mm. was basically just like that. Um. Yeah. I just. I think. But I think. Just science alone just tainted everything in this film for me. <laughs> I just can't see anything good in it. Apart from the ending, of course, which was um, my favourite, you know, the credits. Especially <laughs> at the end. Oh, it's even the bit when you was revealed that woman was a 35,000 yeah. <laughs> year old god. That, that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. That's the... Yeah. I mean, considering, you know, that was the jump the shark moment by this movie standard. Yeah. Oh, no, I thought that was a wonderful reveal. It was, and now we're going to show you just how credible all the people we've been interviewing aren't. But the thing was, yourself yeah. and Kitch didn't believe myself and Martin, and we kept saying, this isn't the stupid part yet. This isn't the stupid part. And you, oh, like, you kept saying, what that. the hell is the stupid part then? <laughs> this is God, right? Okay. Is uh, jumping the shark, nuking the fridge, and now being the god. Yeah, yeah. That that that's that's taken it and above and beyond because she actually believes she's a god. Yeah, she actually. I believes don't she's a think so. Okay, people uh, say people believe yeah. she is a god. Sorry. I think you know when she's interviewed well, it, it, about it, 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 she starts to say she doesn't think she she's channeling the gods. She flips between it a lot. 
<coughs> you know, if she's Consistent. speaking to an audience, she makes out that she is the god, but when it's an outsider speaking to her, she just says, oh, I'm just channeling them. And what the hell was her pipe? I think we can <laughs> dish many a sarcastic answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know if crack. she's... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she's on crack or if she's insane or if she's a con, a con artist. Maybe all, the tr- all but, of the above. Yeah, all of the above. That's possible. Yeah. I'm not saying it was meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, it's like, but it was meth. You know, it was like it was pointed out. She kept saying you can make yourself look like anything and be whatever. And I say, so why haven't you transformed yourself into a, you know, I don't know, a Megan Fox lookalike then? <laughs> Are you still like yeah. looking like that? Yeah, it's... Well, it's like Deepak Chopra who says you can stop aging if you just... <coughs> yeah. You think about no, the, it. the best way you yeah, can yeah, just it is but he, he hasn't aged at all, aging. has he? Yeah, he hasn't aged at all. <laughs> yeah, he says you can prevent or you can reverse or you can stop metabolizing time. The metabolizing time, <laughs> that just makes no <laughs> fucking sense. <laughs> That's true, Deepak Ease. Yeah. You, and... I, I, unless you're somehow eating the fabric of space and time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which, uh, I suppose I'll ask you, what was the funniest laugh out loud moment? I know what mine was. I I can't think of a specific one. For me, it was when they gave their definition of what sex was. <laughs> I don't even remember that. I think we all laughed. And I, this thing is, I can't remember, it was so stupid what they said. Oh, Zilla, can you? It was stupid, but I can't remember the exact words now. No, not the word for word. It was something to do with talking to your higher <coughs> self. That's what sex was for, to connect with your uh, higher spiritual self. Yeah. Oh, they're talking about anking. Exactly. That's what it made me think of was Jordan and his anking. <laughs> anking. And yeah, I suppose. I just thought they were going to bring up chakras at one point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I suppose we'll go on at, like the people he interviewed. Um, one of them is that Albert. He's he's a proper scientist, isn't he? Yeah, I don't remember the names of all uh, of them. But yeah, but yeah there there was one guy who who was uh, or is, and um, he's been very a vocal. proper physicist who was basically got tricked into being in the movie. Yeah, because he, I think he's been very vocal <coughs> since it was released about how he was yeah. misrepresented. Um, I think the, the best drinking game there was spot the obvious edit yes. whenever they cut yeah. to him. You'd be pissed by the end of the first half hour. Because yeah. mm-hmm. there was one part where he says, one option is this. He explains it and then they cut away from him and they never come back to you what the second one was. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just atrocious editing and... Yeah, sometimes... Not trying to hide it. <laughs> yeah, because that was the other thing with the editing of the interviews. You know, you know, if you know editing techniques, sometimes they'll cut away to some other footage while an obvious editing process, but they didn't do that here. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was, like, the usual cast of cat, like Stuart Hamerov. I don't know, there's not much you can really say about that. that hasn't been said already. Yeah, he just has no idea what he's talking about. He is really good at his his chosen profession, isn't he? He's a neurologist. Yes, I understand it. Yes, but he he's uh, he's. I don't know why he's bringing quantum mechanics into it. Um, Who else was there? There was he. He just doesn't understand that at all, even by the standards that humans can understand quantum mechanics. I mean, no one really understands it. That's it's just. But Marty, he's a scientist, therefore he understands all science. Yeah, Maybe it's something science. like that. It's like the old comic. It's like he the has old a doctorate comic. in science. <laughs> yeah. uh, and a... what's the other guy? Um, he's well known in New Age. Is it Wolf? His surname is. Yeah, Fred Allen Wolf. Yeah, because the thing with Hammerov is at least he's somewhat pro-science. Whereas Wolf is saying yeah. he's just totally anti-science, isn't he? Yeah, he he's uh, basically uh, he he does have a legit PhD, 
in physics. Oh, there he goes. But up. but he has completely left academia. Yeah. Uh, I've just looked, got on. He's done a shell drake. No, he's an independent yeah. physicist. Yeah. Right. Whatever that's, that that's, is. That's what it's called. That's, that's when you don't submit to peer review because conspiracy. Yeah, well, I'd say like Stuart Hameroff, he is somewhat pro science, whereas Fred Wolf, he's totally even states that he's against the scientific method. Which yeah, is he used. says he said something about how uh, the, the way we do science is dead or something like that. He yeah, says that in the movie. And uh, no, it's more alive than ever. Yeah. Yes, more more right. science is being published every year with every passing year. And who else was in it? There was the very boring Irish guy, and I, I can't <laughs> yeah, the, even remember the, what he contributed. The sober Irish guy. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember his name, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a theologian, so he has n absolutely nothing sensible to say anyway. But that was the thing, he was so boring you can't even remember what he spoke no. about. The others you no. can remember, like at least some. All I can remember is the cuts between them where he seems to age 10 years in between them. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's so, like on one second he's very well dressed and well groomed, and the next he's just totally dishevelled, like he's been out in the yeah. wilds for a few years. Yeah. And who else? John Hagelin. Have you you've heard of him, Marty? Yeah. Is he another? Uh, yeah, he's another one of those guys who used to be a legit physicist. Yeah. But again left academia and he's been doing this uh, meditation transcendent bullshit thing uh, for a while and he, I, I think he's a bit nuts he tried to run for president apparently yeah for the natural uh, law party yeah oh joy and that w yeah he the ones who do yogic flying or something. Oh, you remember that? Yeah, and and absolutely yeah. nothing he has done has anything to do with what it was, what he's talking about. So oh, his yeah. his uh, scientific credentials are completely irrelevant to the subject of the movie. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Ziller, do you remember that uh, election broadcast then? Oh God, yeah, that uh, was that, one of the that's funniest gone... things I'd ever seen. Yeah, for those who don't know. Um... Here in the UK, like I said, when a party enters the election, I think it's kind of a um, broadcast law that they have to allow. the. It used to be they, they could allow all parties standing in so many seats. They allowed them to have like one broadcast, wasn't it? Yeah, something like it's that. A, they changed it because under the rules, it would mean you'd have to let, you know, some of the far right, some of the really... Well, I think this was what changed it, but... The Natural Law Party got to make a broadcast one year. Uh, <laughs> I remember them saying, like, all the positive thoughts would change Britain. And then they had, like, the weather map of the UK with all these people in meditation poses with wavy <laughs> lines coming off them. And I just remember it says, it looks like they've all just farted or something like that. <laughs> and then right it got far, really, maybe. they said how they planned to do this was through yogic flying. Yeah, <laughs> and they show, and then it cut to scenes of people. You because know, I remember that got ripped the piss out of here for it was the highlight oh, yeah. of this election campaign. And for anybody who doesn't know what yogic flying consists of, basically, um, they were on what looks like a bouncy castle. Um, Isn't that what Dawson to... does in Street Fighter? Might be, yeah, uh, <laughs> it looks very similar. You have to cross your legs in such a way that I think you put your feet almost behind your backside. Or, or it looks something weird like that. And then you fling yourself on your crossed legs across the room. Yeah. And it looks absolutely hilarious. And for some... Well, basically, you do that and it solves whatever problem you're thinking of at the time because reasons. Yeah. Well, um, that was incredibly stupid. Yeah, but... Yeah. It was because of these laws we had in the UK about elections and broad. They <coughs> managed to get on and they managed to get a nationwide broadcast of this. And it had, I think, the complete opposite effect they were hoping for. Because they were just oh, ridiculed. Yeah. 
I can and I can understand why. I'm pretty sure it's going to be on YouTube somewhere, this broadcast, because, I mean, you might not m remember much about political broadcasts, but because that's what yes. they're called here in the UK, party political broadcasts. It's like these five-minute adverts around the election time for each of the parties just saying, mm. oh, here's our policies, this blah, 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 vote for us. And then this one came on one night, and I think, because it was around supper time, wasn't it? I remember it previewed Silla. Silla? I take we broke Zilla. Yeah, but I, like I said, they would show them after the... Sorry, sorry I, I cut off because I just yeah. found it on YouTube. I was just going to say, the usual <laughs> thing for these broadcasters, they show them before the 6 o'clock news and then before the 10 o'clock news. Yeah. Because that's how I remember watching it. I was watching... We were we just finished our dinner and my dad turned on the TV on for the news and we were all just sat there in stunned silence watching this. <laughs> but look it up, Natural Law Party Political Broadcast, and I'm sure it's on YouTube. I'll be surprised if it's not. Because it's... No, it's definitely, it's definitely on there because I've just found it. It's Natural Law Party 1994 election broadcast. Yeah, it's, it's, flying. it's uh, astounding to say the least, this thing. Yeah, uh, I have to watch it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back on topic. It was just when you said yogic flying, I thought, oh, you've seen that one, Zilla. <laughs> yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we've... And we said the one other guy they, that I can remember was the Indian guy. And all I can say that was, well, in every this, new age this, thing, they have to this, have a token Indian. Yeah. Discount Deepak Chopra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, said, I think it's just... You know, you go to any New Age blog, any New Age podcast, they will always have a token Indian person there to speak about yep. it. Yep, everyone agrees there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think, um, I don't know, how do we, how shall we need a rating system for these films we're going to look at? So, <laughs> I do. Well, I, don't I, know I just should... wanted to mention one last thing that we'd missed yeah. out. Um, was they they were going on they never mentioned it by name but one of the things they were talking about was the um paranormal parapsychological experiments from princeton engineering anomalies research lab oh yeah and they were talking about the ones with the random number generators and the oh, yeah. clicks where they would record a tape with clicks and then put it in yeah. a sealed vault and then bring it out and somebody had to listen to it and try and will there to be more clicks on one ear than there are on the other and it would magically make it that way. It was just ridiculous. If anybody wants to learn more about how utterly shit the pair lab is, just you can do start off by looking at Wikipedia and just seeing the strange claims they made. Like They reckon that they had spikes in a random number generator that corresponded to 9-11 yeah <coughs> yeah i uh, is it a case of really shitty controls or is it legitimate yeah. cherry picking or what well, is think, it out of the actually no i think it's mostly confirmation bias there's yeah. it's statistical insignificance being touted as if it's statistically significant yeah and you're only counting the hits that you find even though they're really shitty small hits that yeah. are lost in a sea of noise of hits that aren't hits because they're misses mm -hmm. it is just ridiculous yeah um so to wrap up uh so i don't know how what kind of rating system we can have for this because Miles has got there before us and come up with a good one. So. And how does uh, that work then? He rates it on... How does he rate it? Kitch, you'll know because you're a big uh, fan. Of, yeah, there's four different factors. Like, the how angry it made it. Yeah. The consp conspiracy, bad science, and how dangerous it is. And how, and oh. how uh, angry it made him. Uh, that, was the, that was the old one. Well... Before you brought in the danger. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'd like to sum it up in, in one. Yep. Uh, but I, I don't know relative to what, you know? Yeah, that's the only thing. But I took the Batman on Robin. <laughs> well, 
I mean, I suppose we can say for, you know, the dangerous information in this film, I don't think there's that much that folk will come away with that's actually really dangerous. Well, some of the water <laughs> stuff kind of gets close yeah. to the idea. But it's it's, it's, like like it's homeopathy. basically homeopathy, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, they don't outright state homeopathy. But there's nothing here that's going to make yeah. folks stop taking their meds or... Well, um, that in the theatrical version, that's that's yeah. one of the messages. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah I that, that. that you, you don't need medicine because you can just will yourself into better health. So, well, it is. So it is fairly dangerous, shall we say. Uh, but... Yeah. Are we got to go by this two But sci science this version? denial is always dangerous. Yeah. So I don't know what scale shall we use for the danger of a film. I don't know. I have no idea. We should have thought this through beforehand. No, we can think of something, <laughs> surely. About in terms of. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. We really need the Jeopardy music right now. Yeah. Oh, I can't think of something. About in terms of, I don't know, Russian roulette. Russian roulette. <laughs> the number of bullets in the gun. Yeah, this is yeah, four there's a good bullets one. The amount of bullets in the gun. I would put this at three bullets out of six. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. There is some danger in it kind of the yeah the coming off your meds but overall i wouldn't say it's this that harmful the rest of the film no so no so i'd go with two no. two bullets i would say yeah i'd go with two low low enough not well, it's not as bad as some of the stuff we're about to do and yeah that's that's ourselves. that's definitely true but i see the, the danger in uh, in science denial in general, misrepresenting uh, science and you know getting people to not be interested in real science. Yeah. Uh, so I may not look at it in terms of you know danger to the individual, but in terms of danger to society yeah. in the long run, uh, I'm gonna give this four. So that's four. Zilla, how many bullets? I'm gonna go for three. Okay, so it's yeah fairly consistent there um as for the amount of bad signs i did come up with something while you guys were talking we can oh. rate this in terms of voyager episodes oh threshold so thresh so threshold <laughs> yeah. is like full-on bad science whereas at the other end oh, i don't know what's a good science episode <laughs> of voyager there's no such thing is there i think you're just gonna have to find the one that has the i will just go for star trek in, in general it. shall we so, like, a good science episode would be something like uh, Deep Space Nine Pale Moonlight, where the science is really good. To have one. So, I'm going for a threshold. Uh, I don't know that this, there is much... Usually, when Star Trek gets, uh, has a good science episode, it, it's because there there's no science in it. Yeah, so that's why we're going <laughs> yeah. this game. Yeah, okay, okay, I, yeah. Uh, well, this, this is definitely threshold. Zell, are you going for a threshold as well? I'm definitely going for a threshold. Kitch won't understand this scale, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll agree, if threshold's the top, then I'll go with the top. <laughs> and, you can't beat threshold. And uh, for rage, I don't know what... That ha Kitch, uh, that has people traveling so fast that they evolve into salamanders and have sex and give birth to... Uh, what is it? They they give birth to, to young salamanders that grow up in hours. Wow, that kind of butchered all the laws of yeah, it, it theories of science e that I know. It butchers every field of science. Um, and it, but oh, okay, well. then. it butchers okay. that, it butchers Star Trek continuity, and it butchers its own continuity within the episode. Yeah. yeah. It's that bad. Oh, okay, then... then. Two thresholds. <laughs> <laughs> really and bad. it refer refers to infinite velocity as... Duh. So that's really fast. <laughs> okay, well, I just hate the way it refers to infinite velocity as an actual number yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's stupid. So, 
for um for the rage i think the scale we can use is uh we can go with famous um internet memes for this so there's still so i'm going for angry german kid <laughs> i think the angry G and the next one down will be leave britney alone i think and you can come up we'll, <laughs> we'll let the audience decide with the other scales till you know totally calm <laughs> A totally calm will be Afro Ninja, I think. I was a little above Afro Ninja. I was like, except for that one particular part, but pretty Afro. I was bored almost. I was pretty much bored watching this movie. In fact, no, I think the yeah. lowest, lowest one will be Sneezing Panda, then an Afro Ninja, then Chocolate Rain, Leave Britney Alone, and at the top, Angry German Kid. <laughs> I think that works, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm going for an angry German kid on this. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say leave Britney alone. Because it what the I mean it's the same shit over and over again. There's there's really nothing that stands out yeah. as pissing me off. It, you know in in that in that way. I, uh... Zilla. Um, for most of it, I'd I'd almost go for like yeah, chocolate rain kind of style. But but then it it does mention dimension in the Wu way, and that irritates me more than anything in the world. So can I have a chocolate rain point dramatic squirrel? <laughs> does that work? Yeah, maybe a dramatic squirrel can be like a half point. Yeah. <laughs> so I think don't, I mean, don't butcher geometry and call yourself fucking Professor Quantum. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and so for overall rating, oh, are geez. we? Uh, we forgot one. We need to for a conspiracy theory as well. Conspiracy. No, don't. I, no, we don't want to rip. No, off let, let, no, let's we're already not ripping it. off no. miles. So we're not gonna... Oh yeah, it's I, a... I, I, th I think we should just have one rating. Sum it all up. Yeah, just a one word rating. Threshold. <laughs> yeah. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, are you guys all happy with that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Delayed reaction. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was nodding, then I realized, wait, I'm not on camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you keep doing that, you keep performing to a camera that's not. Actually, getting shown. I can't help it. I'm a vi I, I need to be seen. I'm a visual guy. I communicate through expressions. Expressions. Not unlike an ape. So, I don't know. Any final thoughts or any news you guys have or announcements? I'm going to be concentrating more on blogging in the near future. All right. So, apart from that. Uh, Marty? No, I've got nothing right now. I'm. Uh, I'll probably make another woo of woo pretty soon. Um, and Zilla, I do believe, like I said, we're working on stuff right now, the two of us. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you do. You was like, you. oh, wonderful. No, but uh, myself and Zilla, we are working on this new channel project that's going to be out in a few months we're not going to give dates because we just know with real life it's impossible to keep them but yeah we're going to do we're going to script material together doing debunkings of stuff and <laughs> i need to it's when i invest in a good quality camera and green screen we can start doing it it's going to be a bit of performance involved so we're not going to say oh, much cool. else because we don't want to uh, do i have to perform yes <laughs> And oh. perform you fucking will, I'll tell you. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to be scripting material together on this channel, and hopefully you'll all enjoy it. It'll be something a little different, I think. Yeah, yeah. cool. And with that, I think we shall let it go. And like we said, if there are any conspiracy or woo movies, documentaries you want us to look at, just leave them in the comment section with just one note i know we'll get requests for creationist stuff but i think for at least this year we'd like to 
just get away for, from creationism a bit. Yeah, yeah, right. Mark, right. It, 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 right. it's right. been right. Uh, right. it's been right. done to death. It's it, it still needs to be done, but uh, yeah, it's saturated we'd like, right now. I feel like yeah, we'd like to do some other stuff. Yeah, right I now. like I said, I, we're just going to, and I don't think we're bringing anything new that hasn't been heard. So no, that that's the really boring part about creationism. Yeah. It's just I the mean, same the same claims over and over again. We can try to find new ways to debunk it the, the challenge is to find new funny ways to do it yeah it, it, there's no real and i really you, you really can't say anything new yeah every way of debunking it's also pretty much been done on youtube now i think yeah <laughs> yeah you know, you know there's been serious ones there's been angry ones there's been funny ones you know we've had just commentary we've had performances and all that and i just can't see what we can bring to it anymore and yeah. it's like I think it's after doing all those intelligent design movies, we've just kind of, it's the same thing over and over and over, and you kind of just yeah. lose the passion for that after a while. So we'd like to diverge into other things. So anything else you'd like us to address, and we'll happily go into it. Um, the principle... And if you want to join me in demanding that we shove Foster Gamble's idiocy up his own ass, vote Thrive. <laughs> Yes, I think we definitely do thrive because that's quite amusing. But also, like I keep saying, we do have our eyes set on the principle. We're just waiting yeah. for it to come out on DVD. And yes, we will have cool hard logic. We, he's agreed in. He has yeah, no <laughs> pun, but principle. he's agreed in principle to join us for doing that commentary. And hopefully, he'll do the review with us as well. Which I think yeah, everyone's going to love that. So. I think everyone will enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's going to be glorious. So, yeah, so that's just that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be analysing all this junk information, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. Way, kind of the old show. It just, yeah, the format we tried just, I think everyone enjoyed it, but getting it together will just prove to be more hassle than we thought. So Yeah. So, th yeah, this is the new format, and it's a lot easier for us to do. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll be back soon. Like I say, leave your suggestions for... Any films you want to do? And any final messages, guys? No. Uh, don't watch this movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, goodbye and take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.